welcome back my dear student teachers to the course knowledge and curriculum we are in the first unit of the concept of knowledge and the fourth module sources of knowledge this is dr v girija professor and head school of education base institute of science technology and advanced studies let us move on to in detail to know about the source of knowledge the sources of knowledge which we get is from sense experience that is known as empiricism reasoning alone that is rationalism and we truly know that of which we are certain that is a priori knowledge since since experience a uh, posteriori knowledge cannot guarantee certainty certainty reason alone must be the means for getting knowledge and the second one is third one is introspection knowledge of one self that can be found through internal self evaluation this is generally considered to be a sort of perception for example i know i am hungry or tired the fourth source of knowledge is memory and memory is the storage of knowledge that what that has that was learned in the past whether it is it to be past event or current information and the fifth one is testimony testimony release on other to acquire knowledge and communicate it to us some deny that testimony can be the sources of knowledge and insist that beliefs gained through testimony must be verified in order to be knowledge let us look into the domains of knowledge that is cognition affective and psychomotor and its signification in education the objectives of educational or to bring about desirable changes in the students behavior patterns to study the objectives of instruction benjamin s bloom has classified them under their domain is called cognitive affective and psychomotor under each domain bloom uh, listed the objectives in a hierarchical form starting from the lower level to the higher level hence this arrangement is called taxonomy of educational objectives when we look Uh, deeper into the tab, taxonomy of educational objectives let us first uh, understand what does this cognitive domain the mental uh, processes that happens in the cognitive domain process under the cognitive domain process the objectives are listed in the form of a hierarchy or not knowledge understanding application analysis synthesis and evaluation according to bloom the cognitive domain includes those objectives which deal with the recall and recognition of knowledge and development of intellectual abilities knowledge this objective is concerned with the recall of information and most of the teachers are of the opinion that the purpose of education is to impart knowledge knowledge is no doubt is essential but it is not an end is not the end of all teaching and teachers intention should be to move the student knowledge is no doubt is essential but it is not the end of all teaching uh, teachers intentions should be to move the student to higher level of thinking the second one is understanding and this level this second level objectives require more than simple recall of information it requires the learners to translate interpret and predict trends application science as a set of principles or generalization which must be understood this objective uh, principles students to apply these principles to solve concrete problems and make predictions affective domain as cognitive domain is important to learning detailed attention has been paid to it however emotions also play an important part in learning psychologists are of the opinion that psychologists equal and uh, emotional development are inseparable and that meaningful learning involves the emotion science is no longer considered only a body of knowledge rather it involves attitudes and feelings and the affective domain deals with the emotional aspect a taxonomy of educational objectives under this domain was given by benjamin bloom at the following level was receiving responding valuing organization characterization the different objectives and the affective domain are discussed briefly in the psychological approaches understanding this level this second level objectives require more than simple recall of information and it requires the learners to translate interpret and predict trends application science as a set of principles or generalizations which must be understood this objective principles students to apply those principles to solve concrete problems and make predictions 
synthesis. In a way, synthesis is just the opposite of analysis level and this objective requires the student to put parts together to form a whole new whole. This requires divergent thinking and creativity. Evaluation. This is the highest level of cognitive domain and it requires judgment based on known or collected collective evidences. Affective domain. As cognitive domain is important to learning, uh, learning, detailed attention has been paid to it. However, emotions also play an important part in learning. Psychologists are of the opinion that psychologists equal and emotional development are inseparable and that meaningful in learning involves the emotion. Science is no longer considered only a body of language. Rather, it involves attitudes and feelings and the affective domain deals with the emotional aspect. A taxonomy of educational objectives under this domain was given by Benjamin Bloom at the following level was receiving, responding, valuing, organization, characterization, etc. The different objectives and the affective domain are discussed briefly in the bi uh, psychological approaches. Interest. All living things that are surrounded them and beauty of nature fascinate to people. It is the task of science teacher to create and sustain this interest. Interest in science may lead to the student to vocational pursuits or in the development of lifelong hobbies. To achieve this objective, the pupil is provided ample challenges, stages for the following activities which help scientific interest in them, visiting places of scientific interest, making collection of specimen, fabricating improvised apparatus, making simple preparation, reading scientific journal or the scientific activities where the student interest are manifest. Appreciation. For example, the student of science should be able to appreciate the contribution of science for the progress of civilization. The progress of civilization, the appreciation must come as an outcome of teaching. Let's move on to attitude. Conditional of readiness for certain activity, it is the mental set of the individual which is characterized by predisposition toward objective persons of event and tendency to act. Development of a proper scientific attitude is one of the major objectives of teaching science. This helps the student to become open-minded, well-planned teaching situations, direct, meaningful and purpose activities, adequate experimentation, verification-wide, reading, build-up, right attitude among peoples. To achieve this objective, the teaching of science has to be done in an evolutionary way. The curriculum includes such topics where it is possible to reveal stirring uh, biography and anecdotes, some stories having uh, incidents of adventure, charm and romance, and life stories of scientific and the impact of science in modern life. Habit formation. Science is pursuit of truth and it is pursuit demands honesty. Honesty, preservation, patience, concentration of mind, and objective observation. These help the learners to become self-confident. So, teaching of science should encourage the formation of right habit, socially desirable and acceptable. Psy psychomotor domain. Science has been defined as the combination of knowledge, attitudes and processes of skills. The ultimate objective of teaching science is the development of skills. Students should use or apply the acquired knowledge and attitudes to the process of science. Although the taxonomy of educational objectives have been proposed by different educational educationists, they under the domain classified as imitation, manipulation, precision, articulation and naturalization. For simplicity, we discuss the objectives in the following categories as experimental skill, construction skill and drawing skill. Experimental skill. This includes collecting the necessary apparatus and assembling them from an Experiment, handling of apparatus and instruments, the extreme care exercised in manipulating the sensitive apparatus, preserving chemicals, specimens for future use. Construction skill. This involves improvising the equipment for performing the experiments, repairing certain equipments, apparatus and appliances. Drawing skills. The skill includes drawing the sketches of certain apparatus, proper proportions, neat labeling of parts, etc. Observation skill. The skill considered to be achieved is the people can read correctly the instrument and apparatus record, uh, uh, record observations faithfully 
and make calculations correctly and draw inference. Problem solving skill. The pupil is expected to adopt a systematic method in problem solving called scientific method. The method consists of some essential steps like sensing the problem, defining it, collecting data, organizing, interpreting, formulation of hypothesis, testing them and finally arriving conclusions. The above discussions brings out the objectives broadly classified by Bloom's taxonomy. Science being an ever-changing and growing subject, the objectives should also change and grow correspondingly. The present tendency is to give importance for affective and psychomotor domain of teaching statistical science in addition to cognitive domain. Metacognition Metacognition means cognition about cognition. In other words, it is thinking about thinking. It is an awareness of one's own thinking pro progress processes. It allows individual to think about how they feel and what they are thinking. It provides the ability to plan ahead, see the future consequences of an act, uh, action and to provide alternative explanations of event. It also helps to think about how one is perceived by others. One's knowledge of his own thinking patterns leads to better self-control and more effective, st effective studying. It can be used to develop strategies for improving learning. It facilitates development of the skill of debate and augmentation. Components of metacognition. Metacognition consists of three basic elements. They are development of uh, development, a plan of faction, and maintaining and main monitoring the plan of uh, plan and evaluating the plan. Metacognition regulation. It is the regulation of cognitive process and learning experience through a set of activities that help people control their learning. Metacognition regulation contains three skills and they are, the, they are planning, monitoring and evaluation. Planning refers to the proper selection of strategies and the correct location of resources that affect task performance. Monitoring, it refers to one's awareness of comprehension and task performance. And evaluation, it referred to... Uh, it's referred to assessing the performance of the individual on the final product of task. Metacognition experience, it implies the experience that has something to do with the ongoing cognitive process and metacognitive experience in a responsive for creating an identity that matter to an individual. Importance of metacognition, it makes learners aware of learning process. It helps people know about their own thinking. It enhances the examination performance. It helps learner performance tasks more efficiently. It facilitates accurate evaluation of learning tasks and it facilitates or it increases learning output. The basis of knowledge. Knowledge is the understanding that people develop as they react and use information either individually or as an organization. Ex explicit knowledge refers to knowledge that is trans transmittable in formal systematic language which is more precisely and formally articulated and removed from the original context of its creation or use. Tacit knowledge has a personal quality which makes it hard to formalize and communicate. Tacit knowledge is subconsciously understood and applied, developed from direct experience and action and usually communicated through for informal conversation and shared experience. Knowledge by acquaintance is knowledge based on personal experience. Examples of this sort of knowledge could be places we have visited, books we have read, and people we have met and spoken to. Knowledge by description, on the other hand, is knowledge that we have not acquired by direct experience. Examples include places that we have only seen photos of, books we have just read, reviews of, and people we only know through other people. Forms of knowledge are included in school education. Understanding the different forms that knowledge can exist in and thereby being able to distinguish between various types of knowledge is an essential step for knowledge management. For example, it should be fairly evident that the knowledge captured in a document would need to be managed in a totally different way than that gathered over the years by an expert craftsman. Over the centuries, many attempts have been made to classify knowledge and different fields are focused on different dimensions. This has resulted in numerous classifications and distinctions based in philosophy and even religion. 
Knowledge management and organizational learning theory almost always take root in the interaction and relationship between these two types of knowledge. Knowledge mixture, explicit knowledge. This type of knowledge is formalized and codified and is sometimes referred to as know what. It is therefore fairly easy to identify, store and retrieve. This is the type of knowledge most easily handled by teachers which are very effective at facilitating the storage, retrieval and modification of documents, texts. Tacit knowledge, it is sometimes referred to as know-how and refers to intuitive, hard to define knowledge that is largely experience based. Because of this, tacit knowledge is often context dependent and personal in nature. It is hard to communicate and deeply rooted in action commitment and involvement. Tacit knowledge is also regarded as being the most valuable source of knowledge and the most likely to lead to breakthroughs in the organization. Embedded knowledge. Embedded knowledge refers to the knowledge that is looked, locked in the processes, products, culture, routine, artifacts or structures. Knowledge is embedded either formally such as through a management initiative to formalize a certain beneficial routine or informally as the organization uses and applies the other two knowledge types.